That's him. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Brian and I are here. This has been a long time coming. Uh, from last year, we started talking about this. Tiger muskie is what we're after. It's gonna be really fun. This is kind of his backyard, his neck of the woods. Invited us up and uh, it it's really seems like a diverse, like very cool fishery. I mean, just to see a tiger muskie is gonna be awesome. started by uh, heading into the weeds, you know, looking for weeds. The guy said you could visually see these big tiger muskie laying there and you could fish for them. So we've been going in shallow, but it doesn't seem like there's anything in very shallow. There's no bass, there's no uh, pike minnows, and we haven't seen any uh, tiger muskie yet either. And that's about it. So we just keep taking the boat into shallow, kind of back out the deep. You can see them here now, like at nine feet sight fishing for the, the the word on the street is you'll be able to see them so we got into where in a position to where we could maybe see one of these things laid up not leaving not leaving what is it i don't think he's giant a bass you get a bass oh it's a freaking oh that's a freaking beautiful fish oh my god dude look at get that get in the net get in oh. the net Yes! Yeah! yeah. Oh, my, oh god. my god! That is the most beautiful oh, thing. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's a real trophy you got there. I tell you what, it's it's hard to explain the emotion when you've cast it as much as we have, and when you hook into a beast like that, you know you've got something special. <laughs> I think this is uh, one of those native. Um, the bull trout, isn't it? Well, it's it's the sister of the bull trout. <laughs> it's the squawfish, <laughs> AKA in today's political world, the pike minnow. I think Brian, we think Brian might have saw a, uh, a tiger muskie in the shallows or somewhat shallow, about eight feet. We just come across, we're kind of working our way in here. I'm trying to find the where the river dumps in. I'm thinking it's you know mid-July. Uh, maybe the river dumping in here will be uh, cooling the water off enough for him. We're running up to about noon now. Uh, what we're doing doesn't seem to be working. I mean, we haven't caught a fish, we've seen some bass. Um, I think we saw one tiger muskie, but not confirmed. And we've been working everything from 10 to three feet of water. So when, with pike, when it warms up, they go deeper. And I know the muskie will go deeper too. So we're gonna take the boat, go try to find like some big rock piles somewhere, uh, something that's more traditional.
right away we go to troll and we get hit immediately. I got a big fish on, breaks me off. Brian has one on just within minutes afterwards. They switch into the spinner. It's like, boom. <laughs> we got these things figured out. That. That's him. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh. It immediately it had another one on and lost it. So we're super pumped. We kind of feel like we might have something figured out here. We're going to keep putting it to him. Time and time again, you know, you got a, you're not a little nick in the line and you think no. it's going to be just fine. And, and that's usually when it happens. You know, you, you do end up hooking up and, and pay for not getting that knot tightened or fixing that nick. So good lesson learned. It was just good to have one on, you know, to see that tip hit the water and, and just bounce. You know, we knew we weren't, we knew we weren't hooked up on the bottom or a stump. It was genuinely a, a muskie that had come out probably from behind one of those stumps and just destroyed it. Now we've got some arsenal out. Now the muskie are in trouble. Totally. <laughs> I'm so ready for another one. Get freaking. I'm gonna stop. Oh. You weren't ready for that one. You didn't get a hook set. No. <laughs> now you're ready? Now I'm ready. Now I'm ready. I don't know how he gets off with those things, with them three Fuck. pitchforks. Dude, they get off like that all the time. Not so much. <laughs> that was a long day of grinding it out, but you know, we're just gonna get right back after it in the morning. Uh, we got here pretty early. Uh, we, we thought these, these big tiger muskie are probably hunting in the dark. We had two of them on yesterday and had failures. That's a, one of the things with these giant fish is you can't have anything wrong with, it, with what you have set up. If, if your line, if you got a bad knot, if you got a bad swivel, if any of that stuff that you get away with on trout and walleye and, and that sort of thing, you're not gonna get away with here. We are trolling for last, we trolled for a couple hours this morning, first thing, so we kind of thought that was gonna be the deal. Uh, then we went back to the, just the traditional casting, so we've been casting for probably an hour and a half or so now. It's not that we've been moving in shallow, you know, trying to physically see if we could see one of these fish laying there. Haven't seen one in shallow yet, but we're gonna go back to the one thing that did get us a couple of fish yesterday, and we're just gonna go try a couple other areas. And, you know, kind of hope for the best. Hope we uh, get in front of one. We we figured these are the fish of a thousand casts, and we got to be pushing how many, Brian? Nine hundred ninety-nine to a thousand. I mean, well, we're right there. I gotta figure. So I, I banked my cast from yesterday, and so when you added up yesterday's plus this morning's cast. I'm right at about a thousand, thousand and one, honestly. So we're probably talking about literally any cast now. So um, it's going to be a different day today for sure. Now that we've got these casts under our belt. It's game on. <laughs> Sometimes when you're a professional fisherman, things happen. And something happened to me last week while we were filming. I got a perch spine underneath my fingernail. 
and it got infected really bad. And so I got, went to the doctor, got some antibiotics, but things got worse. And we're filming again, obviously. We got to Idaho. I've been kind of playing it by ear, but uh, we got to go to the hospital. So uh, my camera guy and I, we're going we're gonna to run to the ER and see. I mean, I got antibiotics. It's not working. As you can see, we got a problem. So uh, we're going to go see if the doctor can help me out get on some other antibiotics or something and, and get this thing hopefully back to at least drain because it looks like a wolf, werewolf. Fished hard, I mean, 38 hours I think total uh, on the water, daylight till dark and you know what, it, we're not quitting, we're just gonna take a little break. I called my uncle who you've seen on the show, talked him into bringing his camp trailer up, here we are. He said, hey, let's let's go out and try it. And I said, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not hard to talk me into it. We are back at Little Payette Lake. Now, Brian and I spent three days here chasing tiger muskie. Rod and I are back here. There's some pretty big smallmouth bass in this lake. Um, there's not a lot of them from what we can tell, but there are a few. So we're going to drop in here um, and try to put together a pattern for smallmouth bass. Now one of the reasons why I think these smallmouth are generally big fish is because a lot of the small ones are getting eaten by the tiger muskie. And today, the fish, the smallmouth, they're big. Little payette. Smallies are real dark, almost black. They're beautiful fish. The, wa the water is crystal clear. They're looking for shade to protect their eyes and, you know, for a, a little more comfortable temperature, I'm sure. Whopper plopper. Is that the whopper plopper? Yeah. Oh, Tom finally caught that big bass on the rocks. No way, nice work. Yeah, that's a good one. Beautiful. Oh, almost black. That's small, probably three pounds. These smallmouth, from what we can tell, are sitting tight to the cover. Uh, they're, they want rocks and they want a steep drop off close to where they're hanging out, but they're all getting back in the timber. Um, there's logs laid down. Um, way out from the bank, almost like you would picture like lily pad fishing. Lots of different structures, rocks, uh, hydrilla, you know, uh, shorelines, deep drop offs, points. The fish make do with what they can get. As the day progressed, it just seemed like we kind of slowly started getting out of fish. So we, we bumped out to a spot that we found about a, a few days earlier. There's some big logs out in the lake. Uh, the bottom comes up to about nine, eight, nine feet, and there's grass. So we're gonna head there and see if we can find some fish. You got your jig? He's got a follower rod. He's trying to eat it out of his mouth. See him over there? Yeah, right there. Oh, that's a nice fish. Yeah, that's a dandy. Look at that. That's a big one. Yeah! Whoo, man. 
kind of work the bank and now we're out there's some flooded stumps out here and we're just going to kind of work along a little deeper structure and see if we can get one of these big smallmouth up that's a nice fish look at there's another one with it you got your jig he's got a follow on it he's trying to eat it out of his mouth see him over there yeah right there yeah that's a dandy look at that that's a big one yeah Woo, man, I've been working hard for that big boy. Woo, man, here we go. Just a chunk, big old smallie, look at that fish. There's another one with him. We just got in this area, it's about eight feet deep, started seeing some grass, and I saw one scooting away, and then this one just came up and devoured it. Awesome, right on, we've been working hard for that one. It, it needs to be stumps, grass, and about six to eight feet deep. That's what the fish are in. So from that point, now we can start dialing it in. See him? He's right underneath that tree. I don't see him, but I'm sure he sees us. He's on the left side. There you go. Look at him chasing it. Not exactly what they want, I guess. This is fun, sight fishing. Dennis warmed him up for me and then I closed the deal. The whole lake was very loggy. It's like just solid logs, the whole lake, pretty much. That was the the, the whole deal. So the only other the only other structure in that lake would be the dam, which was rocky. So we fished that quite a bit. We also went up in the mouth of the river, and we thought that would be a really good area for tiger muskie. Well, we've got some really big smallmouth there too. So I start digging through my box and I find a Panther Martin spinnerbait. Now it's a sonic sizzle tail. So this spinnerbait has the Panther Martin blade and a grub body. The tail swims great. It's got a nice thumping action. It's heavy. I can send it a long ways and really cover some water. And I think that was really key today. We were able to cast those things a long ways and get those spinner blades coming back. And man, I started putting fish to the boat. Dude, look at that. We just freaking ate it. Wow. Oh. It's a, it's a squaw fish, that's why. Trophy squaw. Rod's favorite fish of the trip. Wondered why it hammered it so hard. That's a trophy. Look at that. This is what we're here for. Squawfish, politically correct pike minnow. Look at that, that's a trophy. That's what you work all day for right there, kids. We, we bounce ideas off each other on different areas to go. I have a lot of ideas and and he said, hey, let's, let's go out and try it. And I said, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not hard to talk me into it. So I love to travel and try new fisheries. Big long. Uh -oh. yeah, I told you. I told you. We should go some. 
What'd you catch him on? Jerk bait. Yeah. Well, it's just always great to spend time with Dennis. He's my nephew. We've been fishing together his whole life. You know, we'll fish from daylight till dark. And so, I mean, we just always, we just always have a good time. It's always fun. And going someplace new that we haven't fished before, trying to throw something together, because we both have lots of ideas. Sometimes we butt heads because we, we both have ideas what we want to do, and the other guy has his own idea, and so we ended up always, always figured out every time. Never fails. What a great way to end this trip. I mean, we, we fished hard for the tiger muskie. We had a little bit of action. We saw one. It's a tough time of year. But man, the big old smallmouth in here make it worth the effort. And today, we figured them out and smashed some fish. <laughs>